These are the 17th Kingdom Avant-Garde playing cards by Stockholm 17. And right away you'll see on the front of the tuck box that this box is not shaped like a normal deck of cards, and the cards won't be either. This is the only deck of cards that I've ever seen that has so many different distinct features and I'll be going through all of them in this deck review. Besides what you can already see, a couple things that you might not know about this deck is the fact that the front of this is actually just a cutout. So what you're actually seeing right here in the middle is actually some of the playing cards, and that this is done with foil and embossing. Another thing you might not notice when you first get this deck is that this one hourglass is starting to have some of the time run out, and on the other side, more time has already run out. On the bottom, you're going to get some ad copy, and the top says avant-garde again. On the back, you get a continuation of the design, and now let me show you how to open it. Because this is a tuck box that actually requires no glue, which every other deck of cards that you probably have all required glue. So what you're going to do first is you're actually going to take this one right here, and you're going to be pulling it out of the top just like that, that way it pops out there. And then the other one on the bottom side, you'll pull out there and slide it straight through this hole that it then opens up like this. You still have two more flaps there, so you can then get rid of the cards and then I'll show you the rest of this tuck box. So those two other inner tuck flaps have more design work on them as well and then the entire inside of the tuck box is all done with more red. So obviously this tuck box by itself is absolutely stunning. This is what it's going to look like put together if the cards are not in the tuck box. It ends up looking like this and it can go all the way together just like that. But that's all I can say for this one of a kind tuck box, so let's take a look at the cards that come inside. The cards are going to be in the same shape as the tuck box, which looks more like an X or an hourglass. The back design is going to consist of a white border, a thin black border, then another white border, and then a bunch of really intricate design work with two intertwining snakes. Technically it's four snakes, but then since it's mirrored, it's really two. If you're wondering, it is a two-way design and it also has a crown at the top that says 17 in Roman numerals. Now onto your number cards, you're going to have a really unique set of numbers, but with a couple of things that are going to be different on the backs of it. Let me explain what I mean by that. You're going to see just kind of highlighted behind all of this, where you'd have your pip here, your indices there, and your values there. Of course, indices and values are up here as well. But behind all this, you have some extra artwork, which is basically the back design with a couple of tweaks. First of which, you actually have a sword going straight from the top where you can see the hilt up here all the way through. And then in the center, you have an extra design down there as well. But this is what all of the different number cards are going to look like. You're going to see that the suits and all the different things are going to be slightly reshaped and all the colors are going to be redone slightly to where the reds are a little bit more dark and a little bit more of a burgundy, but all the placement all the way through is going to be the same. The other thing that you're gonna see is different is the order of the cards. So normally it would go spades, then diamonds, then clubs, then hearts. Clearly we went spades, then hearts, then clubs, and diamonds. And the other thing that's gonna be different with this is the order of the cards. So normally it would go ace to king, ace to king, king to ace, king to ace. This one goes ace to king, ace to king, ace to king, ace to king, which is definitely a normal thing to happen when it comes to a Stockholm 17 deck, which just makes it really fun and unique. Then you get your three aces. For the ace of hearts, you get the high priest. For the ace of clubs, you get merchants. And the ace of diamonds, you get knights. And now on to the court cards of someone who might be my favorite court cards designer. Just take a look at these court cards. The line work, even in and of itself, is absolutely breathtaking. The color choices, the designs, I honestly can't say anything higher about this design on every one of the Stockholm 17 court cards. And this isn't even a, like a sponsored video. It's just the fact that every single deck of court cards that he puts out are all absolutely stunning. You get four extra cards, first of which is going to be three warriors. There's your first, second, and third. And last but not least, of course, this is Stockholm 17, so you get your standard 17 of diamonds. And last but not least, your Stockholm 17, the 17th Kingdom of Antgard, Ace of Spades. There is one other thing about this deck, though, is the fact that the sides of these playing cards are also printed with a red matte ink. And that's going to go all the way around the outside of this deck, making it absolutely stunning with just one extra little thing that makes this deck beautiful. Now let's see if this deck can handle well. So first let's check out a Pharaoh Shuffle, and I've never tried a Pharaoh Shuffle a deck that looks quite like this or has edge printing. I mean, I've done it with gilding before, but not edge printing. Um, let's see, wow, look at that. Every other card, exactly every other card. That's crazy. Well, let's see what this is like with weirdly shaped cards. Well, that actually worked pretty well, nifty that. Uh, now let's try it from the other way, this time from top to bottom, because some decks Pharaoh top to bottom well and some decks don't. Um, that was just a user error on that first part with it where it slid, but 
all in all, this deck pharaohs absolutely beautifully. And then when it comes to the stock feel and finish of this deck and playing cards, the finish is going to be amazing. It glides beautifully, as you've seen with all the different fans that I've done and all the different ways that you can make a deck of cards glide in so many different ways, whether it be spreading them, one hand fans, or anything else. This deck glides beautifully, so the coating on this, immaculate, no issues when it comes to the finish whatsoever. Now, when it comes to the stock and the feel of this deck of playing cards, it's going to be pretty much middle of the line, maybe a little bit thicker than a normal deck of playing cards, but not by much, if at all. But the stock of it and how it's actually going to feel of the deck of playing cards is going to be a little bit different. So of course the stock is going to be pretty much middle of the line, maybe just a little bit thicker, but the feel of it is either going to be buttery or snappy. Buttery decks are more for things like Under Pressure, which would look like this. Let me try that again though, because trying to do it with a deck with a different shape is a little weird, so let me give it a take two. There we go, that's better. Or for something like a Card Spring. So pretty much buttery just means malleability. Then snappy decks are more for use for moves like Backdrop, which I don't even know if I'll be able to do this. I had a funny feeling I wouldn't be able to do backdrop with these because there's no middle to hold on to or bend. So let's see if a move like ATM would work considering I do have a bit of it on the corners. Yeah, there we go. So you can do ATM with this deck, but I'm not sure how many other moves. Yep, that one does not work either. Regardless, this one does have a good mix of both snappy and buttery. So if you're going to be doing moves that require a lot of malleability, or if they don't, it's actually not going to matter because you're going to have a good mix of both snappy and buttery. So regardless if you're using it for cardistry, for magic, for card collecting, or just playing poker at the card table, anything is going to work with this deck of playing cards as long as you can make sure you factor in the shape of the playing cards if you're going to be doing a magic trick or a cardistry move. And if you are wanting to pick up this extremely unique deck of cards, I'll leave a link to it in the description below and popping up right here. If you want to check out another deck from Stockholm 17, check it out right there. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. This is CPM, signing off.